Oh hey, it's Benny from Kami Cosplay. I hope you're all hanging in out there and use your time during this lockdown for something exciting. You know, staying at home is really important right now, but that doesn't mean you have to be bored. I, for example, recently found this weird looking Nerf gun lying around in our workshop. And I'm like, hey, that's cool, let me take a closer look. Sadly, they pulled it in the ugliest colors they could find. I mean, this combination of gray, green and orange. But you know what? Screw this. I got time. I can fix this. And I know just a thing that would make it look awesome. Mass Effect. Oh yes. Let's just take some of this black, silver, red and white and ooh. We'll turn this green monstrosity into a slick space gun. Now that's more like it. What, you wanna follow along? All right, let's rewind a bit. First, let's take a look at what we have. The general shape of the Nerf gun is not half bad. There are a few annoyances though that we will need to get rid of first. Like these ugly safety logos, the raised name letters, and of course the two Nerf gun logos. So let's grab a metal file first. It may be a little bit aggressive, but we'll only use it to sand down the rough shape for now. Just sand away until most of the logo is gone. Next, some sandpaper. I used this 100 grit one and went over my sanded areas to clean up more of the ugly logos. As you can see, it's almost gone now. Next to all the lettering and safety icons. Just sand until you barely see them. Then to finish everything off, I used a really fine sandpaper. This 1200 grit will do just fine. Just use it to sand over everything again until you don't see any more scratches. Now repeat the same steps for the Nerf gun logo at the front and this ugly Elite logo at the grip. It's almost impossible to sand this one away without hurting the pattern beneath, so just take away all of it. Now let's take our cleaned up Nerf gun to the painting area. I'm going to use my airbrush for most of this, so if you want to know more, go check out our airbrush painting book on kamicosplay.com. It'll show you how to get started and make the most out of your airbrush. If you need some recommendations for which machine to get, I'll put links in the video description. Now back to the Nerf gun. One problem is that the plastic is really slippery. Like every area you see here that is reflective will not hold the colors very well. To remedy that, I'm going to use this black surface primer. It's especially made to be used on plastic like this and will help my paint to stick a lot better. So let's put some in and cover the whole damn thing in primer. As you can see, it applies really smoothly. However, it will make your gun look less shiny in the process. I don't mind this though. Compared to the really ugly green, it's already a world of difference. So the base coat is done and I think it looks great. One thing I had to decide at this point was if I should try to keep the Nerf gun functionality intact. Like this part here at the top slides back and forth and will probably damage the paint after a while. But let's just first put some color underneath it. Even with the paint, the movement is still fine and works like it should. However, as you can see, it will damage the paint after a while, so I decided I wouldn't use it anymore. Anyway, let's head back to the table and decide what colors to use. For my reference, I used this photo. The lower area and the front are black, so I decided to keep everything under this line black as well. I would also need a large silver grayish area, so everything above this line would need to be gray. The N7 logo would come here to the front, and the white and red stripes would go right over here. Sounds like a plan. Now let's grab the first color. I'm going to use this steel paint from Vallejo to begin. Even though I want the bottom part to be black, I don't want it to be just pure black. Now that would look really kind of boring. Instead, I'm going to completely cover everything in silver first. Then next, I'm going to grab my black paint and slightly dust over the silver again. I'm careful not to cover it completely though. I want the silver to shine through at some areas and I want it to look used. So after I was done, I used my dirty hands and grabbed all over the black area too. I even put some more of my silver airbrush paint on my fingers, rubbed most of it off again and then used them to further buff the highlights. You don't need to be too careful here. Just make sure you only have a bit of color left on your fingers and then grab all over your paint to make it look dirty again. You know, just go wild, it will only add to the realism. As you can see, this already looks a lot more real and used. And here you can see the difference again. Just plain black and buffed with my dirty fingers. 
Next, let's grab some masking tape. I'm mostly using this green frog tape. For the next step, I need to protect all the black areas I already painted, so I carefully masked it all off with little stripes. Then it was time for some light grey. I carefully painted the top part in grey, but made sure not to cover everything completely. Then I used a darker grey and added some shadows here and there. While this looked good, the grey didn't look metal enough to me yet, so I grabbed my steel paint again and dusted over the whole thing. This sadly took away some of the shadows again, so I had to add them back in. If you're quick, you can use your fingers to rub away the airbrush paint before it completely dries. Use this to wipe away your shadow color from all the raised details. You can of course also put some more paint on your fingers and buff it all by hand. After applying all these layers, my result really looked like used metal, so I was happy. Then it was time to add the stripes. I masked off everything except where the stripes would need to go, and then grabbed a white grey paint. I carefully applied it to both sides, and then masked off the outer part and added red to the center. Since I didn't have the right shade, I mixed these three bottles to get the tone I needed. Just apply it slowly, wait a bit for it to dry, and then pull off all the masking tape again. This part is really satisfying. Now the black and the grey area, as well as the stripes, were done. I almost forgot how ugly this thing used to be. But we're almost at the end, and only a few details are missing. First though, I'm going to apply a layer of clear coat to protect the work I have done so far. For this, I'm going to use this satin gloss varnish from Lucas. Then, while my gun was drying, I used my free time to cut out the N7 logo from some masking tape. This can take a few tries to get right, so take your time. Next, I placed the logo where I wanted it to be, pressed it on firmly, took some white and red color and filled it in with a brush. If you applied your masking tape correctly, the logo will look something like this. Nice! I repeated the same steps for some additional lettering at the top as well. Then I also wanted to add a few chipping details to the grip, so I took a fine brush and applied a bit of silver here and there. And then last but not least, the gun also needs some weathering. For this I suggest using oil colors. Just mix some brown and black and apply it to the lower areas. With oil colors you have a lot of time to wipe them away again, so enjoy the process and don't go overboard. Just a little is good enough. As you can see, the difference between weathering and no weathering is really subtle, but still visible. I just like it better this way. Anyway, a last coat of spray varnish to fix all the details and oil colors into place, and my Mass Effect Nerf Gun paint shop was done. Here is a reminder of how ugly the original looked at the beginning. And here is it again after one day of painting work. Customizing this piece of plastic was a lot of fun. Maybe I should do this more often. Hmm. <laughs> nah, let's just play some Animal Crossing. If you happen to have one of these Nerf guns at home, I can highly recommend spending some time to paint them. And you know, it doesn't have to be Mass Effect. You can paint them like Halo or Borderlands or Fallout, whatever you like. Just keep yourself busy and entertained. Anyway, I hope this video helped a bit to keep you distracted. And if it did, please consider leaving us a like or subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. I hope you all stay healthy and safe and see you next time. Bye bye.